Hey mi gente, it's Junie and Steve, you already know my name, but if you're new here, hey! Today we're going to be talking about the one and only Nick Cannon and his anti-blackness. So, <laughs> enjoy! Nicholas Scott Cannon was born on October 8, 1980 in San Diego, California. He grew up with his paternal grandfather and grew up in Lincoln Parks Bay Vista housing projects. Originally, he was a part of the Lincoln Park Bread Street Gang but left the gang after a close friend died. In 1998, he graduated from Martin Vista High School in Spring Valley, where he was president of the African Student Coalition and participated in track and field. To start off his career, he was doing stand-up on his father's local cable access program. Then, he was a part of the show All That from 1998 through 2000. It's just cruel. There's something (laughs) weird about this giant carrot. Yeah, I know what you mean. Which, by the way, All That was Nick Cannon's big break as a superstar. Disclaimers. I looked it up to Nick Cannon. I was a huge fan of his as a child. And a bit when I was a teenager and the reason why I'm mentioning this is because one some of y'all do not have any empathy when it comes to constructive criticism but two because I want to I want to let you guys know in case you feel like I'm being too fair with Nick Cannon which by the way I'm not trying to but if I do come off as being a bit fair now you know I grew up watching him on TV and when you grew up watching someone as a child and then they disappoint you as an adult you get some type of sentimental feeling towards them but I'm not going to try to do that in this video I promise but I just want to give that a disclaimer just in case I also do want to mention that I grew up watching Nick Cannon on the following which includes all that of course um drumline Garfield, the movie he was voice acting, and he was in Monsters House. I didn't even know that until I made this video. And of course, Rags. I also want to bring this up right now because I don't know if I'm going to mention this again in detail. In January 2012, Nick Cannon had a health condition, and then he had a father of health condition as well. And then Fast forward to March 2012, he announced that the reason why he was having these heart failures, or I hope I'm saying it right, in case I'm wrong, I'm going to put it somewhere on the screen, having these issues, these numerous health scares, he found out that he was diagnosed with lupus, and, and, and because of that, certain things that Nick Cannon has been doing play a factor of his current life today does that excuse him but i just want to bring this up because i I do know a few of y'all are going to try to defend him and no now to the juicy parts of the video anti-blackness number one nick cannon had an issue with singer songwriter uh, well or rapper Isaiah Banks, she happened to go visit Wild Out in 2018 to promote her single. And Nick Cannon, as well, if you do not know, Nick Cannon, he is the host of Wild Out and also the creator. And I'm assuming he's the producer, and especially now because it got canceled because of a situation with him disrespecting Jewish people. And they canceled him basically, Vet- uh, Vetacon. 
Isaiah felt that she was experiencing colorism on the show and harassment, racism, all the, well, most of the isms. And Nick Cannon seemed to take her criticisms as a joke. Azalea Banks shared her thoughts and concerns to social media after her appearance on Widen It Out. She made a post reliving her experience. She began, I did Widen It Out. There were a ton of pre planned colorist jokes. And of course, the crybaby cried. She continued, They planned this. Hit me on short notice. Told me I didn't have to participate in the coon as freestyle battles, not my style, and I was to sing my song and go home. I've never felt so much hate and rage for anyone else than I did in that moment. Her fans reacted to the post in her comments. A user acknowledged her allegedly crying. She responded, I cried, I wanted to go off, but I couldn't. Too many people from Vinicon there. A fan asked if she knew the plot and or theme of the show and she responded, Because I wanted to promote my song, they told me I didn't have to participate. Then I show up and they flipped the script. No one sent me any emails to prep me of anything. In her Instagram story, she responds, I'm sorry, but yesterday was a testament to why I don't ever let niggas near me. They had some white chick on stage calling them Wakanda rejects. Nick Cannon ended up responding back to Isaiah Banks on Instagram in 2018 as well. This is what he said. Don't you hate when you create your own storms but forget your umbrella? We're praying for you, queen. Hashtag speedy recovery. Hashtag healing. She hashtag widen out for real. My thoughts. I'm not the biggest fan of Isaiah Banks, but in this area, I do believe most of the things that she's saying about her experiences on Wild It Out. If you have not noticed, Wild It Out has an issue when it comes to representation of darker skinned black women. And FYI, before anyone tries to come for me, I do not watch the show, but I have been seeing what people have been saying about the colorism issues with the exception of Jesse Wu, which by the way, I'm going to go into detail with her next in a few. I feel like we have to listen to what Isaiah Banks is saying because if this did happen, which I think most of what she's saying is true or everything is true, she deserves an apology from Nick Cannon, Vinacom, CBS, and whoever else. Oh. CBS Vericon, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Anti-Brackness number two. Jesse Rue accused Nick Cannon's show producers on CBS Vericon. And Jesse Rue explained her story about how she experienced colorism on the show. Said once you got through the process and, and got into yeah, the was, room, it was, wasn't right. a, a a pleasant experience. No, it was not a pleasant experience. There were two opportunities that came to me to have a speaking role. But the first time was like, right as I was getting on stage, I was told, hey, Jess, you're not gonna speak. I'm like, uh, okay. So, you And that was told to stage, you by a woman of color or somebody on the crew? And it, they... was told, it was told to me by, by um, one of the producers. Right, okay. Yeah. The second time that I had an opportunity to speak, right before again, I was told, hey, you're not gonna speak. But this time around, it was a kind of like, I caught the between her and someone else. So I go to the person that she was talking to and I'm like, hey, Rachel wanted to get, wanted to get me to do this. What's going on? And I was told, you know, you're not exotic. 
the interesting word exotic, which I really want to yes. get into because I heard you say that on the interview mm-hmm. on the grapevine. And I mean, if you really think about truly the mm-hmm. the definition of exotic is mm-hmm. someone for, with the descent from a foreign country or foreign land. Yeah. You're Haitian. Mm-hmm. You are you are the definition That's what I said. <laughs> of exotic. I'm like, Hello, I am Shit, you I'm are an island girl. Sa passe, na Okay, bon on free, Dio. Like, hello. But, I literally have, and I had a green card at the time. Like, what? What is it? That's not like, I, I am exotic. <laughs> I show you my green card. I believe that this did happen to her. And in this area, I do not think it's entirely Nick Cannon's fault, but. After seeing his DJ Vav interview thing, Majengi, he did talk about it briefly that he did want to diversify the women on his panel when it comes to winding out. Yo, I'm I'm guilty, and I will say it, but even like, I I hate having to say this, but even like wilding out, I'm like, yo. Find me some dark skinned girls. Like the fact that I have to say that is because I'm trying to rep for our queens, but. But after hearing Jesse Wu's experience, did he really? Because if he really did, he would have made an effort to get these women, these brown to dark skinned black women in one out. It makes you think, Nick Cannon, you really wanted to have a diversified group of women or you didn't? Which one is it? At least he tried to get Jesse Wu to talk about her experience on his show. Number four, Nick Cannon creating broken homes for his black and mixed with black children. In case you do not know, as of now, Nick Cannon has 10 children. 10. Two with his ex-wife, Mariah Carey. In 2017, Nick Cannon had a child with Brittany Bell. Then they had two additional children in 2020. And 2022, they had another child. Then he has twins with Abby De La Rosa. In 2021, he had a son with Anissa Scott, but sadly died at five months old in 2021. A son with Brie Tessie in 2022. A daughter with Nanisha Cole in 2022. This is irresponsible. Sure, Nick Cannon has money. This man does have money. But your ill broken homes, broken homes for your children. How are you going to manage to be with a bunch of your kids? How? That's that's impossible. And sure, Nick Nick has ways maybe because he has money to travel, but it's not the same thing. You always gonna need your parents around in any circumstances. So I I really do not know what to say other than what I just said. To me, this is bad. And sure, these women did ask for this, for what it looks like, with the exception of Mariah Carey, of course, because that is his ex-wife. And she has no control of what this man does with his penis and his semen. Um, I spilled some coffee down here. Oh, how interesting. I love that story. Tell it again. <laughs> okay, you don't have to be all sarcastic, okay? I, I just thought maybe one of you might want to come and clean it up. That's all. You can run. <laughs> Do we look like maids to you? I see no little hat. Excuse y'all. me. Oh, I guess we better rush over there and clean up, mister. I can't hold the cup without spilling this mess. I- I'm 
Watch her gonna miss him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, okay. <laughs> The final one, anti-blackness, Nick Cannon, the mother of his children, and preferences, all in one. Most of the children that Nick Cannon has are with mixed with black or non-black women. Yeah. It's the women he's chosen to be the mothers of his children. Surprise, surprise, the turban-wearing, dashiki-rocking, Hebrew-Israelite adjacent has a preference. A colorist, featurist, texturist preference no different from the millions of conquered black men who can't bear to be with women who look like them. And while most black women aren't sitting around hoping to be some man's baby mama number four, there's something very unsettling with us about how comfortable supposedly pro-black black men are with the erasure of black women. Clinging to ignorance or claiming preference or using the one drop rule as excuses to exclude you from being the object of their desire. Their names are Mariah Carey, Brittany Bell, Abby Den La Rosa, Anissa Scott, Brie Tessie, and Lanisha Cole. As you all could see, hopefully, Nick Cannon has a type of woman that he wants to procreate with. And I'm going to make it clear, I'm not a fan of the word preference. I only had to use it right now because I have no choice. Because it's the best way to wrap this shit up. But I do not like the word preference. If you know me, and if you are close to me, you already know this. This is not a secret. I cannot stand the word. And, and if you've seen a few of my videos, you already probably know this too. Because I mentioned, I think, in one or two videos before. But I'm not a fan of the word preference. Because people use these excuses to be anti black And I'm, I'm not with that shit. I do think they want to be close to white supremacy. Or they want to be close to whiteness. Or however you prefer to call it. I do not know Nick Cannon, but I wouldn't be surprised if he does want his kids to look mixed race. That's just my opinion. I, I could be wrong, but his pattern, it's very, it's very questionable. And then having so many random kids with numerous women, but then again, I do, I do also bring the women. I definitely bring them because they accepting this foolishness and entertaining this BS. So it's their fault as well. Children are not toys, and you cannot just be having kids to have kids. Talk about that. This yeah. is this lupus thing again, right? Yeah, I, I'm probably gonna die sooner than most people, and I, and because mm. my, I mean that's what. That's what the doctor said. But I'm living life like, no, what did the like doctor, fuck, I say? might die in the morning, so let's fuck all night. Like, Nick, what did the, yeah, right. Well, now, now you got a point. The doctor, <laughs> why wear now condoms? I might not be here tomorrow. But Nick. So Nick Cannon has a systemic illness that will likely end his life in the next few years, and he's decided to deal with his existential dread by possibly passing on his hereditary illness to as many of his children as possible. Sadly, he's not the first or the last man to do this, but hopefully his children's split of their inheritance is enough to cover the medical costs. Concluding statements and the outro of this video. Nick Cannon is going to be a hard case to conclude with because I cannot control Nick Cannon. As a matter of fact, we, whoever has common sense watching this video, we cannot control this man. This man, he's going to do whatever he wants with his semen. Yeah. And the least we could do as a community, yes the black community is that we could try to educate people like what I'm doing right now with this video and to educate black people to do better and why certain things are not okay and sure some people want this type of lifestyle but once again children are not toys I do wish that Nick Cannon knew that his behavior is not good but we can't control this man, like I said previously. 
the only person who could control him is him. The but, darker athletes going to be the better athletes. <laughs> a lot of times, yeah. But literally, yeah, they would pull out a brown paper bag. Yeah. If you're darker than this bag, then you cannot get into this black hey, college. I'm, I'm the color of the paper bag. Right, so you, you are the paper I'm, bag. I'm right there in the middle. <laughs> but so, isn't it, isn't it? Thank you so much if you made this far in this video. I appreciate you. Be sure to like this video, comment, and please share if you'd like to. I hope Nick Cannon lives for a while because he has 10 children and counting, and they do deserve to have their father here in this earth for a few more, well, for a good chunk of their lives. I do think that Nick Cannon needs to be more responsible with how many children he's having and who he's having children with. Be careful. And how much he wanted to have. Also, one more thing. If you're watching this and you're a man, a straight man, especially if you're black or mixed with black, do not follow Nick Cannon, please. Or any Afni public figure, etc., who has a similar pattern to Nick Cannon. Yeah. Unless you genuinely want to have multiple kids with multiple women. Follow me on any of my social media. Okay, me hunt it. Okay, me hunt it. Okay. Thank you and